Welcome back to Face the Nation. As this year's midterm election campaign kicks into high gear, we wanted to sit down with the chairs of both the Republican and Democratic parties. And we begin our conversation with Tom Perez, chairman of the DNC. You got 58 days to go, a lot of work. Uh, Democrats need to pick up roughly about two dozen seats or so to win a majority in the House. When we look at our CBS polling, it shows mm -hmm. a blue wave is far from guaranteed. Well, progress never rolls in on wheels of inevitability, Margaret, and we're working our tails off everywhere. I feel excited because we're organizing everywhere. We're fielding great candidates everywhere. You see the energy out there. Democratic turnout in the primaries in 2018 has been up 84%. Uh, from 2014, and That's so you see that out there. About. That's the enthusiasm, and, and, and people are enthusiastic because we're fighting for the issues they care about. People's health care is on the ballot. This is the most important election of our lifetime. Your health care is on the ballot. If you have a pre-existing condition, that's on the ballot. Uh, good wages are on the ballot. Education's on the ballot. And frankly, our democracy is on the ballot because this is not simply uh, an election about right versus left. This is an election about right versus wrong. I worked at DOJ for 13 years. A president does not tell the Justice Department who and who not to prosecute. That is wrong. The president of the United States should not believe the former chief of the KGB over our intelligence community. We shouldn't rip children from parents. This is about all those critical issues of health care, but it's also about who we are as a nation. So our you democracy is on the Trump ballot. On the ballot, then. Well, we're fighting for all the things that Democrats care about, and that includes our democracy. And this president has undermined basic principles of our democracy. Presidents should unite; they shouldn't divide. Uh, but when you mention President Trump himself, I mean, this is one of the the questions here. You know, are you antagonizing or energizing? voters when you put not just President Trump, but President Obama, who was out on the campaign trail this week and broke precedent. The White House hit him for that, for invoking President Trump's name. This is sort of one of those unwritten rules that you don't slam your successor. Is this a risky strategy to be engaging like that? Oh, I welcome President Obama on the, on the campaign trail because he's fighting for the issues that people care about. But attacking healthcare. President Trump by name. Well, uh, our health care is on the ballot, and our democracy as we know it is on the ballot. You, you look at what's gone on in this country, and, and you, you see a president that, I, again, I worked under Republican and Democratic presidents at the Justice Department. You see the unmitigated attacks, the attempts to delegitimize the press, the attempts to do things that should never be done. I thought Canada was our ally, and, and it appears that they are our, our fiercest adversary. The world is upside down, and our democracy is indeed on the ballot. And what we're doing is we're fighting for health care. We're fighting to make sure that if you have a pre-existing condition, you can retain your health care coverage. We're fighting to make sure that a union, a worker can join a union and organize and get good wages. Those are the things we're fighting for, and that's what Americans want in their leadership. You have the challenge of messaging against what are positive economic indicators right now. And when you look at CBS polling in the competitive districts that really matter for you uh, to flip, the majority of Americans feel positively about the economic direction of the country, uh, either going from very good, 26%, to somewhat good, 45%. How do you push back against that? Isn't what happens at someone's kitchen table going to dominate how they vote. Oh, it's very important. And, and if you are very, very wealthy in this country, the economy is doing great. But if you are uh, everybody else, the economy is not doing so great. Corporate profits are soaring and wages are flat. People's health care is at risk because the president has destabilized the Affordable Care Act. The cost of prescription drugs are skyrocketing. So if you have a dollar more in your pocket, but the ga gasoline has gone up 50 cents and your cost of prescription drugs have gone up immensely because they're not taking on the industry and your cost of health care has gone up, you're not, you're not even treading water. And that's the reality for millions of people, including the Harley workers in, uh, in Missouri who are about to lose their job. Wages did go up in August at the fastest pace since the recession, but I do want to ask you about the direction of the party in terms of identity. You have said Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who has been this sort of rock star in many ways since she won uh, in New York a few months ago, you've called her the, the future of the party. Is that a sign that more people within the Democratic Party need to tack left? Is that the identity, to go more progressive? 
What I have said is Connor Lamb is the future of the party. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is the future of the party. Doug Jones is the future of the party. We have a party that reflects America in every zip code. We have a party that's fighting for health care. We have a party that's fighting for fair wages. We have a party that's fighting for a democracy that works for everyone, not just a few at the top. And your question about wages, it's important for your listeners for, to understand that real wage growth is what it's about. Mm -hmm. if, if wages go up by a dollar and your cost of living goes up by a dollar fifty, you're not better off. And that's the problem with this economy. If this president would take on the pharmaceutical industry, we could do something about it. If, and, and this is indeed, we got 58 days till the weekend and the most important thing we can do is vote. And one of the things we're doing is making sure we get the vote out everywhere. And we're actually working next week to call uh, on businesses to give uh, two hours of paid leave for people so they, they can get out there mm -hmm. and vote. I'm, I'm gonna ask uh, Chair Mc, McDaniel yeah. to join us in that because we should have this debate and then we should, we should make sure that every eligible person Point can taken. get out there and vote. We gotta leave it there. Thank you very much. We'll bring out here Republican Chair Rhonda McDaniel next. Always a pleasure.